Smoke spirals upward, a noxious pillar against the dying embers of sunset. My boots leave crimson prints in the mud. Around me, the village burns, our handiwork reflected in the crazed eyes of ragged survivors. A lifetime ago, those eyes held fear, defiance. But now there's only blank horror. Ha! Huh? Now, that's a sight to warm a man's heart. Rovald's bellow slices through the crackling din of the fires. Even smeared with soot and gore, his grin is blinding. He claps me on the back, the force of it nearly sending me stumbling. Another village bites the dust, eh, Cormac? I force an answering smile, lips stiff and clumsy. The pillagers cheer, drunken shouts rising around us. We came for their gold, their grain, their women. All we've left them with is ash and tears. In truth, they have nothing even those meagre things now. The dead don't cry. A good night. I manage my voice thick and strangely distant. Good only if you don't count the cold void where my soul used to be. Each village we raise, each life we snuff out, the emptiness grows larger. But fear drives me on, a fear more potent than any villager's blade. Rovold follows my gaze out over the ruin, the light sharpening the lines of his scarred face. You'll get used to it, lad, or you'll die. Only two choices in this life. My hands clench against the urge to draw my axe and see which path he would take. Even the thought is a spark of rebellion I cannot afford. They are right to call me the Pillager. I wear that name like a crown of iron. My only solace lies in that I am no worse than the rest. A ragged figure breaks from the huddle of survivors, a scrawny youth, eyes wide with mad desperation. He charges Rovald, a pitiful knife held high. Rovold doesn't even turn, just backhands him. The boy goes sprawling, then lies still. No one else stirs. The villagers have learned their lesson well. Fear binds them tighter than any chain. Well, Rovold turns back to me. Let's find some ale to wash the taste of this pitiful conquest away. I follow and try not to remember the time when the stench of death made me gag, when the sight of blood turned my stomach. Better this deadness inside than weakness the others could exploit. Better to be the pillager than to be the next corpse in the mud. We push our way into the only tavern left standing, a crude building of rough-hewn timber and mud-smeared walls. The stench of sweat and stale ale is a familiar, almost comforting miasma after the acrid fumes of the burning village. The patrons, mostly fellow pillagers, fall silent as we enter. Their gazes slide over me, a mix of fear and grudging respect. They know a killer when they see one. Clear us a table, worm, Rovald bellows, shoving aside a scrawny serving girl. She yelps and scrambles to obey, nearly spilling the tankards she clutches. As we settle in, greasy benches creaking in protest, I try to lose myself in the raucous din, the slosh of cheap ale and the bawdy jests flung across the room anything to silence the whispers in my own skull. It doesn't work. Every shadow seems to shift, every creaking floorboard a muffled scream. What ails you, Cormac? Lost your taste for plunder? Rovald's question jolts me back to the present. His keen eyes seem to bore through the facade I try to maintain. Just a long night. I force a laugh, but it comes out cracked and brittle. A heavily scarred brute at the next table, Eric, if memory serves, slams his fist down with a meaty thud. Long night. Bah, he thinks like a weakling villager. There's always more gold, more women. What say you, pillager? His eyes fix on me, a beady glint challenging me to disagree. Instead of answering, I down my ale in one long gulp, the bitter burn a meager distraction. Truth is, my stomach churns at the thought of another raid, another pile of bodies, yet showing weakness is tantamount to suicide. Weakness invites challenge, and challenge means a fight I might not win. Maybe he's grown fond of the locals, sneers a pock-faced man whose name I don't recall. Laughter ripples around the room, rough and cruel. The emptiness seems to curdle into a cold rage. Part of me longs to lash out, 
to bury my axe in their smirking faces. But that part gets smaller with each passing day, choked by the fear I despise even more than I do myself. Rovald barks out a laugh. Leave the lad be. He bleeds true enough when the time comes. He turns to me, a glint I can't decipher in his eye. Or am I wrong, Cormac? The moment hangs heavy, a blade balanced on my tongue. Lie and risk suspicion. Tell the truth and risk my life. Before I can make the wretched choice, the tavern door bursts open. A panting boy, his face streaked with ash, staggers in. They're coming, he gasps out. Riders, dozens of them. The tavern erupts in chaos. Tankards fly, benches overturn, and curses fill the air thicker than wood smoke. I leap to my feet, the familiar weight of my axe settling into my grip like a lover's embrace. This, the surge of adrenaline, the clarity of purpose. This, I understand. To arms! Rovold's bellow cuts through the din. Let's give these fools a taste of pillager steel! Men scramble for weapons, fear twisting their shouts into something savage, for a second, I wonder who these riders are, villagers seeking vengeance, or some rival warband come to claim our spoils. Then I shove the thought away. It doesn't matter. Now it's kill or be killed, the only law that ever truly held sway. We spill out of the tavern, a snarling tide of iron and leather. Torches thrust into the night reveal our attackers, not ragtag survivors, but soldiers. They sit their mounts in ordered ranks, the glint of polished steel menacing against the firelight. This isn't a brawl. It's a massacre in the making. Idiots! Blind, drunken idiots! Rovald's voice cracks with a fury that borders on terror. Did he not foresee this? Did none of them? The soldiers surge forward, a wave of disciplined death. There's no time for orders, no shouted battle cries like in our usual raids just a scramble for survival. The pock-faced man beside me shrieks as a lance impales him, his body jerking like a puppet. I swing my axe in a blinding arc, taking grim satisfaction in the crunch of bone and the wet spray against my face. But for every enemy that falls, two more seem to take their place. The pillagers break, scattering like panicked cattle. Some flee blindly towards the woods, Easy targets for the mounted soldiers. Others, Rovald among them, fight back to back, a doomed island of resistance amidst the crimson tide. Someone collides with me, nearly knocking me from my feet. It's the serving girl from the tavern, her eyes wide as saucers. Run, you fool! I snarl, shoving her away, but she just clings to me with surprising strength. Out of the corner of my eye, I catch a flash of silver, an armoured knight lowering his visor, bearing down on us. Time seems to slow, each beat of my heart an agonising sound. I raise my axe, but it feels pitifully small against the charging Destria. A scream tears from the girl's throat. She throws herself in front of me just as the lance plunges and the world explodes in pain. Not my pain, miraculously. The lance pierces through flesh and whizzes past my ear. The girl crumples, a look of wide-eyed shock freezing on her face. I barely have time to register this before the knight is wheeling his charger, preparing for another strike. Rage and terror explode in my chest, a volatile mix that drowns out reason. With a cry, I hurl my axe. It spins through the air, a flash of moonlit steel, striking the knight's helm and knocking it clean away. The rider slumps his charger bolting in a frenzy. The world reels. A tremor ripples through the ground, shaking me out of my daze. More knights are thundering towards us, but with their leader down, there's a hint of hesitation in their advance. I snatch up a sword from a fallen warrior, its unfamiliar weight clumsy in my hand. I won't survive this, but every part of me screams to fight, to die with a weapon clenched tight, not cowering like a dog. Come on then, you bastards! I bellow, the words thick adrenaline. Then something astonishing happens. From behind me rises a ragged chorus. Rovold, battered and bloodied, staggers to his feet, a chipped sword aloft. 
Around him, other pillagers rally, those who hadn't yet fled into the night. They are broken, outnumbered, facing certain death, yet there's a wild, terrible light in their eyes that mirrors my own. The pillagers don't die on their knees! Rovald's voice is hoarse, but it carries through the sudden silence that falls over the battlefield. A cheer rises up. We meet the charge not as raiders, but as cornered beasts. We fight for nothing but the right to fall on our own terms. Steel clashes and men fall. Around me, my brothers die. Then through the chaos I see a banner, a black raven on a golden field. Recognition jolts me. These aren't mere soldiers, they're the king's own guard. We've stumbled into something far greater than a village reprisal. A knight surges past my clumsy parry, his blade flashing like a shard of moonlight. I twist, pain exploding through my shoulder as the sword slices a ragged furrow across my flesh. The ground rushes up to meet me, and for a fleeting moment, I see the girl's lifeless face etched against the trampled grass. Just before the blackness can claim me, a thunderous crash rips through the air. Rovald, a crimson mask from head to foot, smashes the knight's helm with the pommel of his sword, sending the man tumbling from his saddle. Before he can recover, a dozen blades are upon him, not with finesse or mercy, but with the savage frenzy of wolves tearing into cornered prey. I struggle to my feet. Around me the battle rages, yet its tide seems to be shifting. The knights, disciplined and deadly, never expected this ferocity. Some break, their horses veering away from the melee. The scent of fear prickles my nose, mingling with the metallic stench of the battlefield. My gaze snags on a figure clad in burnished gold armour, a raven banner rippling from a lance, the king's champion, no doubt. He barks orders, rallying the scattered knights, his voice carrying a cold authority that tightens my gut with dread. Rovald, too, sees the threat. He staggers towards the champion. His own roaring challenge carries across the corpse-strewn field. They'll clash like titans and we, the grimy wretches caught in their wake, are nothing but fodder. Rovald! The name tears from my throat as he parries a vicious strike from the champion. It's a plea, a word I never thought I'd utter. Run! Whether he hears, I cannot tell. Through the haze, I see a figure staggering towards me. Eric his scarred face twisted in a rictus of pain and fury. An arrow protrudes obscenely from his gut, yet he still lives, still fights. You think they'll let us run, he says. They'll chase us to the ends of the earth, damn them, but not if we're quick. He lurches to the side, pulling me with surprising strength towards the tree line. Into the woods, fool. Maybe we'll lose them there. I fight the instinct to argue to make some grand stand. In the end, I am the pillager, a survivor above all else. With one last anguished look at the clashing titans, I stumble after Eric, the darkness of the forest closing around us like a shroud. We plunge into the forest, the canopy above a choking shroud against the rising sun. Each breath burns in my lungs, and the wound on my shoulder throbs in time with the pounding in my head. There's shouting behind us, the sharp clang of metal against metal, a fading trace of the battle we left behind. Eric stumbles, a strangled cough escaping him. He leans against a gnarled tree, clutching at the arrow shaft protruding from his belly. Blood seeps through his fingers, a crimson blossom staining the rotting leaves below. Curse them! He rasps, his face sickly pale. We won! didn't we? It's a question I have no answer for. All I see are corpses, pillagers and knights alike littering the trampled ground of the battlefield like discarded toys. Can you keep going? I ask, though the answer is clear in the sheen of sweat on his brow and the glassy stare of his eyes. Eric's lips twitch into a mockery of a smile. I'll be going somewhere, that's for sure. You best keep moving, boy. They'll hunt us like dogs, those fancy knights. I'm not leaving you here, I find myself saying, the words surprising even me. He emits a hoarse laugh that turns into a bloody cough. Ah, feeling noble now, are we? We don't do that. 
We cut and run, live to pillage another day. My jaw clenches, the memory of the girl, her wide, terrified eyes twisting like a barbed hook in my gut. Something inside me, long buried under brutality and fear, stirs to life. To the crows with another day, I growl, slinging Eric's heavy arm across my shoulders. Come on! The forest groans around us, ancient, uncaring. We stumble on, deeper into the shadows. The cries of pursuit fade, replaced by the relentless croak of ravens and the rustle of unseen creatures in the undergrowth. The air grows damp, chilling me to the bone and my wound hurts mercilessly. This way, Eric said. He points a trembling finger towards a tangle of roots disappearing into a crack in the hillside. An old tunnel. It might get us clear. We crawl into the open earth, the damp chill seeping into my bones. The darkness is absolute, a shroud that smells of old stone and forgotten things. Eric is a dead weight against me, his grip growing weaker with every step. Damn that night, he mutters, his voice a thread lost in the oppressive blackness. May his bones rot. A sharp intake of breath from somewhere ahead cuts him off. My blood turns to ice. Are we not alone down here? Who's there? My voice cracks, a pathetic squeak against the oppressive silence. Hush, boy, whispers Eric, his tone suddenly wary. Not. Friends. Light blooms ahead, revealing a hunched figure hunkered down in a recess. The stench of decay washes over me. Old meat, sweat, and something foul beyond naming. Leave us be, I croak out. Every instinct screams at me to run, but Eric's weight anchors me in place. The figure turns. In the glow of a moss-covered lantern, I see eyes gleaming like yellow embers and a mouthful of jagged teeth too numerous for any human mouth. It hisses, the sound a mix of snake and kettle. One scrawny arm reaches out, tipped with claws that glint menacingly. Eric groans, recognition dawning in his dimming eyes. Ghoul! The tunnels! They breed in the dark. Ghoul. One of the whispered stories, creatures spoken of in quiet tones around dying campfires. Carrion eaters, lurking where light cannot reach. The fear that choked me before the nights pales against the raw terror that grips me now. Cormac. Eric's voice is frail, barely audible. The sword, in my pack. I fumble behind me, fingers scraping against his crude leather pack. The sword! Steel might be our only salvation against this nightmare. My hand closes around the hilt. Run, boy! whispers Eric, and then his death rattle ends abruptly as the creature lunges. The ghoul's shriek pierces the darkness, a discordant cry of hunger and fury. I swing blindly, the sword slicing through fetid air. My ears ring with the sounds of Eric's death gurgle, the wet crunch as it sinks its teeth into him. Bile rises in my throat, a bitter counterpoint to the adrenaline flooding my veins. The lantern tips over, flames guttering and dying, plunging us into near total blackness. For a terrifying moment, I am blind, at the mercy of, of whatever this thing is. Then instinct takes over. I kick out wildly, my boot connecting with rotting flesh, sending the ghoul tumbling back with a snarl. Light flares again, not from the lantern, but from the creature's sinister eyes. They fix on me, hungry and glowing in the gloom. I raise the sword, my trembling hands barely able to maintain a grip on the hilt. Come on then, you bastard, I choke out, the words more a prayer than a challenge. The ghoul scrambles to its feet. It lunges, and this time my aim is true. Steel bites deep, eliciting a shriek that makes my eardrums throb. The creature thrashes, its claws raking at my legs in a frenzy. Pain explodes in my thigh. I roar, swinging the sword with a clumsy blow that severs one of the grasping limbs. The ghoul recoils, hissing and spitting foul curses I can only half comprehend. Yet it's wounded, and its burning eyes reflect something mirroring my own terror. Desperation. I press my advantage, slashing wildly and forcing the ghoul back. I stumble, 
losing my footing on the uneven tunnel floor. The ghoul seizes on the moment, leaping forward, teeth bared to tear out my throat. In a flash of motion and instinct, I roll, the creature's jaws snapping shut on empty air. Before it can recover, I slam the pommel of my sword into its skull with bone-jarring force. There's a crack, then the light in its hideous eyes gutters and dies. The silence that descends is absolute, broken only by my ragged panting. I lie there, trembling in the darkness, the smell of decay filling my nostrils. For a long, timeless moment, I think I might be just as dead as the creature I slew. Then a thin thread of light cuts into the gloom. The other end of the tunnel, my heart lurches. Freedom? Or another nightmare waiting in the shadows? Driven by a gut instinct, I stagger towards the distant pinpoint of light. Each step is agony. My burning thigh a constant reminder of the ghoul's parting gift. The stench of the creature clings to me, mingled with the rank dampness of the tunnel. As I approach the light, the tunnel opens up into a wider cavern, faintly illuminated by shafts of sunlight filtering through cracks in the ceiling. Forms begin to resolve out of the gloom, massive tree roots thrusting through the earth like gnarled limbs. The cavern floor is littered with bones, some small and animal-like, others disturbingly large. My breath hitches. This is the ghoul's lair, littered with the leftovers of its victims. Nausea churns in my belly, a brutal reflection of the emptiness I'd worn like armor for so long. Is this what I would have become? Another mindless predator lurking in the shadows. Movement at the edge of my vision. I spin, sword raised. But it's only a cave rat, scurrying through a pile of bones with a squeak of terror. My shoulders slump in a mix of exhaustion and bitter relief. I'm alone. For now. The light filters strongest from an opening on the far side of the cavern. With a grimace, I push myself onwards. The opening isn't a natural exit, but a crudely hewn hole, barely large enough to crawl through. Emerging into the open air is like being struck blind. The sunlight stabs at my eyes, forcing me to squint against the glare. Slowly, as my vision adjusts, details come into focus. A winding path, the gnarled branches of ancient trees heavy with moss, the air filled with birdsong. The forest, a place of shadows and dangers, yes, but a different kind than the tunnel's oppressive darkness. For a moment, Rovald's bravado sparks in me. Perhaps I can survive this, can vanish into the wilderness. I am the pillager, after all. Yet as I stand there, alone and bathed in the indifferent light, something shifts within me. The emptiness is still there, like a wound that refuses to heal. But alongside it, there's something else. A raw, terrible awareness of all I've done. All those I've left to rot in the earth. Is this my penance? I choke out. The forest offers no answer, just the rustling of leaves and the distant chatter of unseen birds. I walk with the halting gait of the wounded, the pain in my thigh a constant, throbbing reminder of the price of survival. My sword, slick with ghoul blood, is a heavy burden in my hand. The pillager's axe would have been left behind, a useless tool in this tangled wilderness, but the sword, it feels like a link to the only life I've ever known. The path winds through a dense tangle of undergrowth, its silence a stark contrast to the sounds of battle and the ghoul's death cries. Yet this silence is deceptive. The forest teems with unseen life, the rustle of beasts in the bushes, the beady eyes of birds watching from the shadows. Even the sunlight dappling the mossy ground feels like a watchful gaze. A noise ahead snaps me to attention. Not the scuttling of wildlife, but the unmistakable cadence of footsteps. Fear prickles my skin. More knights? Other fugitives from the battle? My fingers tighten on the hilt of my sword. A figure steps onto the path, cloaked in a patchwork of rough hides and leather. He's lean and wiry, more woodsman than warrior, a hunting knife sheathed at his belt. His eyes narrowed in wary appraisal, fix on me, on my ragged clothes, 
on the bloodstained sword. Pillager! He spits out, the word edged with disgust. My grip tightens on my sword, instinct urging me to strike first, but something in the man's stance, a weathered resilience that mirrors my own exhaustion, gives me pause. Survivor. I force the word past gritted teeth. He lets out a huff of breath, a sound halfway between a sigh and a laugh. Aren't we all? Name's Bran, and Trouble seems to have a keen nose for finding you, eh? My own humour is brittle. Cormac. And Trouble is my middle name. Bran studies me for a long moment, his eyes scanning my injuries. Looks like you saw your share. Come on, then. He grunts, turning back down the path. Best not to linger in these woods. Not with the king's men sniffing around and worse things than them come nightfall. Wordlessly, I fall into step beside him. The promise of shelter, even grudgingly given, is too much to resist. The forest thickens as we follow the winding path. Massive old-growth trees blot out the sun, their gnarled roots anchoring them to the earth like steadfast hands. I stumble more than once, pain lancing through my wounded thigh. Bran casts me a sideways glance, but offers no sympathy. Just a terse, keep up. Where are we going? I manage to gasp between breaths. Sanctuary, he grunts, at least the closest thing to it these parts have to offer. The words sound strangely in this shadowed haven, promising a respite I'm not sure I deserve. Every rustle of leaves, every creak of ancient branches sets my nerves thrumming. The beasts of the ghoul's lair were monstrous, yes, but at least they were savagely direct. This forest seems to coil and shift, a living thing harboring secrets far darker than mine. After a while, we break through the choking undergrowth into a clearing. Nestled at the base of a moss-covered cliff stands a crudely built hut, more a hovel than a proper dwelling. A thin wisp of smoke rises from a hearth, and the faint aroma of stewing herbs cuts through the dank smell. Home, sweet home, Bran says with a note of wry humour. An old, scarred woman emerges from the hut, her frown deepening when she sees me. Brought astray? Trouble follows him like a hound, Bran counters but there's an undercurrent of affection in his tone that surprises me. This is Cormac. He needs a place to mend. The woman eyes me with cold suspicion, her fingers tracing a pattern on a worn amulet hanging around her neck. A pillager! Are you mad, boy? A flare of anger jolts through me, tempered by exhaustion and a need for sanctuary. I'm done with all that, I manage, my voice hoarse. Just need... a place to rest. The woman hesitates, then gives a curt nod. Fine, you'll earn your keep. Food doesn't gather itself and there's always work to be done. I swallow my pride along with a grateful nod. I may have abandoned that life, but the world won't offer respite for free. The days bleed into one another, measured in the sting of blistered hands, the dull ache of overtaxed muscles, and the old woman's gruff commands. Maeve, as I finally learn her name is, drives me like she does Bran, with relentless efficiency. We chop wood, haul water, mend the thatch roof against the ever-present rain. I eat simple meals of foraged herbs and tough, stringy meat. My stomach never quite full, but the emptiness inside me fades, replaced with bone-deep weariness. At night, I collapse on the straw pallet, sleep a heavy, dreamless oblivion, yet even in rest, I am not free. The faces of the dead flash behind my eyelids, the tavern girl, her eyes wide with defiance, Eric twisted in his final agony, the nameless villagers and knights. And even in the darkness, the forest whispers and watches. One particularly stormy night, after a day spent battling the relentless downpour, I lie sleepless as the wind howls around the hut like a mournful spirit. Rain seeps through cracks in the roof, forming cold rivulets against my skin. They're out there, Maeve says, her own palette rustling nearby. She's referring to the creatures of the wood, the things that go bump in the night. I know, I whisper back, shivering against the damp chill. Not just the wolves, the goblins, she continues, a note of dread creeping into her gruff tone. They smell weakness, desperation. 
That's what drew the ghoul to those tunnels. It wasn't coincidence that brought that horror upon Eric and me. I drew the monsters with my terror and my guilt. Your kind brings darkness with you, pillager, Maeve says. It isn't a question, but an accusation. The emptiness in my chest constricts, threatening to suffocate me. I'm trying to leave that behind. A long silence falls. Finally, Maeve sighs, the sound heavy and resigned. Sleep if you can. Tomorrow we'll brew a warding draft. Might keep the worst of them at bay. Exhaustion finally overtakes me, and I drift into a troubled sleep. Dawn brings a fragile respite from the storm, the bruised clouds streaked with a watery, reluctant light. Bran and I venture deeper into the woods than usual, not to hunt, but to gather the strange gnarled herbs Maeve needs for her warding draught. The floor is awash with the smell of damp earth and fresh rain. The spirits are restless, Bran mutters, his eyes scanning the tangled undergrowth. The storm stirred them up, like ants in a kicked nest. I clutch my spear tighter, a pathetic weapon against the unseen horrors he hints at. Maeve said she can keep them. Away? My voice falters as something rustles just beyond our sight. Bran shakes his head. Keep them at bay, maybe. Drive the weaker ones back, but the big ones, the old ones. Those are a different story. A chill snakes down my spine. What happens if they come? He shoots me a sideways glance that's more pity than scorn. Let's just say you don't want to find out. Best we collect what we need and get back under Maeve's protection. The unspoken truth hangs heavy between us. That protection is a fragile thing indeed. For the first time, I realize what these two hardened survivors have risked by taking me in. I was a walking curse, a magnet for death and darkness. We find the twisted blackthorn Maeve needs, its barbed branches gleaming in the weak sunlight, then a cluster of sickly sweet nightshade berries. As we make our way back, the tension grows unbearable. Every rustle, every snapping twig makes me jump, spear poised to strike at shadows. We're close, Bran whispers, his voice strained, just a bit further. Then the ground beneath my feet gives way. I plummet into darkness with a startled cry, the spear clattering uselessly beside me. I land hard, pain shooting up my legs, and all around me, dank earth crumbles and slides. Somehow the storm has opened a sinkhole right under our path. Cormac! Bran's voice pierces the air, a distant, panicked cry. Here! I yell back, the word muffled by the choking earth. Help! A rope of twisted vines dangles down seconds later, and I start to climb. I emerge, gasping and covered in dirt, to find Bran kneeling at the edge, his face a mask of relief. Seven hells, boy! Don't do that again! He pulls me to unsteady feet. Let's get out of here, before something decides to come investigating. The way back to the hut is a rush of frantic scrambling and breathless whispers in the heavy, rain-soaked air. The forest no longer appears merely restless, but actively malicious. The trees loom like accusing giants. The undergrowth hisses with unseen threats. A sense of suffocating doom hangs over us as heavy as the storm clouds above. I am the blight, the harbinger of misfortune. Maeve was right. We break into the clearing, relief washing over us, until we see the hut. It stands in ruins, shattered timbers, the thatch roof ripped away as if by some enormous claw. The crude hearth is overturned, ashes scattered like a dark omen. Maeve! Bran's cry is choked with anguish and rage. He charges towards the wreckage, and I stumble after him, heart hammering in my chest. We find her amidst the debris, her body twisted at an unnatural angle, eyes open and staring. Blood seeps into the rough-hewn floorboards. Fury and helplessness boil within me, a toxic reflection of the rage I felt so long ago at the burned ruins of my village. Who did this? The question rips from my throat, though the answer shivers in the air like a foul miasma. The creatures Maeve warned of, no longer theoretical. 
Bran's jaw clenches. Goblins would leave messier carnage. There are worse things in these woods, Cormac. Things older than men with hungers men can barely comprehend. We have to track them, I blurt out. It isn't vengeance I seek, but some perverse desire for atonement. Maybe, if I can bring down the monsters who ravaged this fragile sanctuary, it might somehow balance the scales of my past. Bran looks at me as if I've gone mad. Track them? Boy, they'll tear you limb from limb. I deserve that. I speak the words flatly, and it feels like the most honest thing I've said in years. He stares, then gives a nod. Maybe you do. But first we need weapons. He starts towards a crude shed beside the shattered hut, its door swinging open on broken hinges. Then it happens. From the tree line bursts a beast of nightmare. Tall and spindly, its skin like ash-grey leather stretched over bone, its mouth full of needle teeth. It moves with swiftness, eyes burning with predatory hunger. My body remembers combat long before my mind does. I snatch up a fallen axe, its heft unfamiliar in my hands. Bran curses, brandishing a fire-hardened spear. We stand back to back, a paltry defense against the embodiment of the forest's dark heart. It lets out a screech that shakes the rain from the leaves, then lunges. The world becomes a whirlwind of snapping teeth, the acrid stench of the beast, and Bran's desperate shouts. The axe bites deep, and the beast howls, but it's only wounded. It lashes out and Bran stumbles, the spear slipping from his grasp. I see my death in its gleaming eyes, a reflection of every life I've taken. Then a flash of movement, a streak of blackthorn and nightshade berries. It's a last throw. The thorns find their mark sinking into the beast's face and the berries burst in its mouth. It recoils, a scream turning into a choking gurgle and staggers back towards the shadows with a final hiss of fury. I collapse, breath heaving in great ragged sobs. Maeve's sacrifice, a final gift of bitter protection. Bran limps towards me, his face filled with grief and a weary sort of triumph. That was for Maeve, he says, his voice thick. I nod, unable to speak. There are no words for this. The tragedy is complete. I am the pillager, after all, and wherever I go, death follows. Years pass, marked by the changing seasons more than any calendar. I survive as branded, by becoming a creature of the woods. I learn to hunt, to set snares, to read the subtle language of the forest. But it's a solitary, haunted existence. Each rustle of the undergrowth brings a surge of terror. They say time heals all wounds. It's a lie, the grief over Maeve, the guilt over the nameless dead I left behind. These things fester, a rot in my soul deeper than any physical wound. The emptiness within me has transformed into something else, a cold, simmering bleakness that eats at my sanity. Sometimes, in the dead of night, I feel their eyes upon me. The villagers, the knights, the ghoul, Maeve. One day, Stumbling upon a clear stream, I catch my reflection in the still water. The face that stares back is gaunt, feral. My hair and beard are streaked with grey, my eyes those of a hunted animal. This is what I have become. The ghost of a pillager. Forever damned for the weight of my sins. Word reaches me. Carried on whispers of wind and the frightened calls of birds. That the king's men still scour these woods. They seek remnants of the pillager bands, and perhaps the monster who butchered a solitary old woman and her kin. Let them come. My axe lies dull and rusting in the hollow of an old tree, but my hands are weapons enough. One evening I leave my crude shelter for the last time. I walk towards a clearing where I've often heard the ring of steel, the shouts of men. They will kill me, as I likely deserve. Perhaps then, at last, the ghosts will find some measure of peace. Come out, pillager! A voice barks as I step into the clearing. We know you're here! Shadows dance around the towering figures of armoured knights, their swords gleaming like accusations. They fear me, the monster of legend. But within myself, there is no fear left. 
only a grim sort of acceptance. I raised my hands, gnarled and scarred from years of wilderness survival. I am Cormac, I shout, my voice a hoarse croak in the gathering twilight. And this is where my story ends. <laughs>